All right, well, let's just get right in it. There's both the reels that we got right there, just taken out of their boxes and set right in front of the camera. I haven't done anything with them yet, but uh, um, before we even get into the hardware or anything about that, here's the real basics that you guys may or may not know or want to know. Um, the only difference that I think I can see on the box is that uh, the president doesn't list its bearings, and that's a 5 plus 1, whereas I can see on the carbon it's an 8 plus 1. Beyond that, there's all the information that you need if you need to pause it or whatever and look it over. But looking towards the hardware side of things here, I don't know if you can immediately tell looking at this, but um, there's a pretty decent size difference in these two reels. Um, this one is significantly smaller and lighter. Well, I mean, it's only technically about two ounces lighter, I think, but when it's hanging off of a pole, you notice it. It's it's pretty noticeable. But um, beyond that, I mean, on this side, one thing that I'll note right away is I do like having the two handles versus the one on the president, but that's very minor and just myself, whatever. Um, otherwise, I mean, again, yeah, weight, pretty different. And, I mean, it does make this one feel a lot more premium, I guess, in a sense. Whereas this one just, it sort of feels more plastic. But, I mean, it's, you know, it is aluminum, and they say this is carbon. So it's designed to be a light reel. It makes sense. It's, it should be light. But, um, like this, yeah, you definitely notice more hanging off the pole as well. But, um, I mean, you can see, like, the full metal body comes all the way around to there. And then, you know pretty stout everything's heavy whereas this one it actually kind of has what looks like a line spot on each side obviously you know it's a left-handed one so it would use this one in the front but it does have one on both sides so i don't know in a picture that would look confusing um and i guess i'm going to start with my biggest gripe with this one specifically um i have other inlines besides this president as well and I gotta say this offset trigger where you know normally the trigger is directly in line right there where you just grab it there it is this one's way over here off to the side and if I'm reeling with my left hand and trying to drop the bail with this I mean that looks all well and good it works fine right okay but that's as far back as I can pull the bale. Oh, wait a minute. There's still that much left. And I can't, holding it like a normal pull, like you would grab this one in the front and just pull it back. Now, I mean, you have, you can slow it down or you can drop it all the way, whatever you want to do. You know, you got your speed right there and everything too, but it, it's just, I mean, when you have it attached to a pole, you can kind of do like a split finger grip and use that to push it all the way back. But then, I mean, you got to always change your hand position just to drop that somewhat comfortably. And I mean, it's not even great, but um, again, maybe that's a minor thing. Other people, it's not a big deal. Or if it's your first one, you would never know the difference anyway. But I digress. It's It, it does bother me. And while we're on the subject of that, um, this is, again, where this one feels more premium, like... Just this little, just dead space that doesn't do anything. It's just a wiggle room that, because this one you can go forward, and now it's completely open. You can spin it that way, spin it that way. You know, it's, it's completely open. That's a neat feature to have as well, but that dead space between opening it completely and then actually starting to open the bale is just, it's sloppy and this piece feels like cheap plastic and I don't know maybe that screw could be tightened down and it'd fix the whole issue I just right out of the box these are my initial impressions because that's all the time I've spent with them so far this knob I mean I don't know again feels more premium over here this just doesn't there's nothing technically wrong with it and again if you'd only held this one it, you'd probably never register that for a second, but if you've had both of them in your hand, this one feels better. Um, but, and I know I feel like I'm dogging on this thing a lot. And, I mean, they are in pretty much the exact same price range if you paid full price for this. I was one of the Black Friday guys that got it for right around 50 bucks. I think it's now retailing for about 70 And I think, yeah, I picked this one up at retail for 69 99 or whatever. 
I mean, look at that. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, look at that. Watch. If there's any weight on that reel, it just goes. It's so smooth. Okay. At no point will that fall on its own. I mean, watch this. You can actually spin it pretty hard, and it just stops. And again, pick this one up. And, I mean, and I'll, I'll even go into that further. Check this out. No problem. Barely touched it. Just whips right around, butter smooth. That extra weight, everything about it, it just, it's just better. And so with this one, they both have a magnetic braking system. I'm, I mean, if you're at all familiar with these, I mean, you've seen something similar to it before, I assume. So you just pop your spool off there. There's your magnets. This one actually has eight, where this one only has six. Um, I don't really foresee that to be an issue, but one thing I will say that I actually do appreciate about the carbon is if you can see that, you got your N, S, N, you know, so they're all marked north and south, so you know um, where your magnets are supposed to be positioned, or, you know, whereas this one, when it's opened up, it looks the exact same, but they're not marked at all. It's it's just nice to see. It's a little touch, but I mean, come on, I got to give it to them where I can because I feel like I dogged on them. But actually, I'm sorry, I just realized that's a screw. So there's only seven magnets, whereas this one only has six. So this one has one more, so for what that's worth. Um, so I'm not going to bother opening this one to show you. It does look pretty much the exact same on the inside. Um, but this one does have one additional one, and again, the magnets are marked with N's and S's that are, I don't know if they're etched in there or what, but while I have this right next to me as well, I did, because like I showed you, I was spinning that and it just wouldn't go smoothly, so I actually took a bunch of these magnets out just to see if that would smooth anything out, just for fun, and uh, so I just thought I'd show you how I did that, because it's actually really easy, and I've seen people try and like pry these things out of there and stuff all i use is this just put it right over top the magnet that you want pop it straight out there you go and if you put it on there straight so the this is pointing up and when you drop it back in there you should just slide it right off and the ends even still facing in the right direction you know just a little thing like that a simple tool pops that right out put it right back in um yeah, just one of those tips. So let me put this back together here. Um, and when, you know, I did say, you know, when you're doing this, it just doesn't feel smooth. You can't just whip it around like you can the other one. However, when you do hold the bale all the way open, that's not to say that this thing doesn't still spin really, really well. And it's cool. It looks like a rim. So, I mean, you got that going for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I feel like I'm dogging it, but I don't want to. It is still a, a nice piece of hardware for what you pay for it, but this is just much more stout, and everything about it just feels better in the hand. It is, two ounces doesn't sound like much, but it does feel a lot heavier when you're picking it up and holding it. Like, yeah. Um, but I do like this little feature right here. I don't know if you can quite read that. Yeah, so when you put your hook around um, that last little hook guide on your pole and then ratchet it so it's got a little tension on it, and then you put it in your rod box, right? That's what everybody does. But then half the time you come out and somehow that tat or there got some uh, the tension got let out. Now you got hooks dangling in the bottom of your rod box and foam and getting stuck and stuff and just wrapped in each other. Well, you put that little bit of tension in there and then you just lock it. I mean, it, it's, it's locked. The, it can't do anything. It can't let slack out. So once you set that tension, lock it in place, you're never going to come out to a mess of, uh, line sitting in your box again. I mean, it's just a little thing, but I gotta say, I love it. Um, and then obviously your drop speed, <clears throat> more or less. And, um, but yeah, I mean, and then that, there you go. Like I had mentioned earlier about the other one, all that slop and the, 
um, trigger system. I mean, there's nothing. It is nice and nice and stout. It's it's actually got a pretty firm pull. I actually like that a lot better instead of just a sloppy loose one. This there's there's nothing, no wiggle room in there. Um, and I mean it's just a damn good looking reel anyway. Like I said, my only real gripe with this one, um, aesthetically or mechanically, <clears throat> is it being a single grip, and that's just stupid. I just prefer the double. However, now when we start talking about mechanically. That's one thing you may have noticed when I put the boxes up right away if you did pause it and actually read through all the differences between the reels. And this is where it gets a little weird. This big, stout, heavy, really good feeling reel has, I believe, hold on, let me see again. Uh, yeah, three and a half pound drag. Um, I don't know about you, but I hook into some pretty decent sized fish through the ice, and uh, I mean, I, I can't wait to try this thing out and see what it can do, but I'm just saying, like, three and a half pounds isn't a lot, um, especially for just how well built this thing is, and you know, maybe it's seriously underrated, and I can hook into some, you know, five pound bass and see what happens. I don't know. Um, I, if not, you know, I have other equipment for that, and we're going to try it out and see what happens once we get ice down here, but... That it does seem low just for this thing just feels like it's built like a tank. Now, again, that's that's crazy. This thing is so nice, but yet such a low drag, right? That just brings us back to this one, where it does feel a little cheaper, a little lighter, a little sloppier, a little, you know, just not quite as nice. Like, look at that. Why are we not? Why is that not spinning? Why is it not catching? Yeah, that's, I don't know what's going on with this, the, oh, there we go, now it just randomly, and it must have just had the, I don't know, anyway, the short version is, uh, like I was saying, this feels a little weird, and acts a little weird sometimes, but uh, this much smaller, much lighter reel has an 11 pound drag compared to the three and a half on this. So that's something I really can't wait to test out too because uh, I mean, it's a little real. It, I mean, it's small and it, I don't know, I just, there's something this heavyweight and seeing something this small be able to outperform it by like three times, I can't wait to put that claim to the test. Um, and these are the first two I'm taking out on the ice once we get in, and I know some spots to go get into some decent-sized fish, so hopefully I can get a better read on what these are both really capable of. I'm just reading boxes right now, and, you know, anybody can write whatever they want on a box. So I haven't seen a whole lot on YouTube as far as this yet, especially as actually seeing somebody use it, probably maybe doing a review or a comparison similar to this maybe, but, like, I, yeah, I haven't seen anybody put 11 pounds to the test, that's for sure. Um, another big thing, too, while this has a very low drag, it's also got a very high gear ratio in comparison. So um, where this only has a 3.2 to 1, and so you're only getting about 21 and a half inches per uh, turn of the handle. This one, uh, the uh, Fluger is... A five to one so you're getting 35 inches every every time you turn the handle so much much faster but lower drag much slower but much higher drag just another one of those trade-offs that uh, whatever whatever is more important to you I guess so um, trying to think of anything any other relevant information I can tell you just by the amount of time that I've spent with them and um, anything the box itself won't tell you that you could already have seen in the beginning. Um, I mean, the Fluger, again, it's a bigger reel, so it does definitely hold significantly more line. Um, <clears throat> but all in all, I mean, I feel like 
those, that's, that's covering everything that I can tell you about them right now. Um, the only thing left that I can do beyond this is uh, I'm going to put line on both of them and throw them both on some rods and I'm going to do some drop tests with a lot of different weights. I'm going to start very, very low weight, like little tungsten jigs that I would really use a whole lot of. So I'm really curious to see how those work because I plan on using them for those primarily. And um, so, yeah, I guess if you guys like this video, I'll do a drop test video and we'll start real, real lightweight tungsten and just kind of work our way up and see how the braking systems stack up if, you know, we got to start removing magnets on one and not the other or anything like that and just really see how the performance stacks up, you know, and does a stout build mean anything when you're talking about what you're really using it for is dropping the, the lure down there, you know? So I guess that'll, uh, that'll maybe be the next video. Let me know.